Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today we will celebrate the passion of the Lord.
went back here immediately. And they went away and found the donkey tied to the door out of the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the donkey? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the donkey to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat up on it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. So now, following the cross, we will enter the church as Jesus and the cross and the crowd enter the church, enter the holy city of Jerusalem together with Jesus. So let us follow him in this holy hour also.
Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. He broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money to give out to the poor. And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me, one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you, be, you can be kind to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for her. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priest with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money. And he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. 
on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, So he sent two disciples, two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room, in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve. And while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another, not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread. And when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned, he gave to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him, and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful for death. Wait here and keep waiting. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, but let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake one hour? You should be awake and pray. The spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. 
Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, The one I kiss is the man. Take him in charge. And see, he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke, Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the high priest's palace, and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. He heard him say, I have authority to destroy this temple made by human hands, and in three days build another not made by human hands. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witness have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave he deserved to die. Some of them started him and, blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting. Lay the prophets. And the attendants rained blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him, and said, you too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I don't know. I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, 
You are one of them for sure. Why? You are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing. I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and the scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priest brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man named Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favor, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again, But... In that case, what am I to do with the men you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Pilate asked them, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole, whole cohort together. They dressed him in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him. And they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to help carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge read, against him read, the king of the Jews, and they crucified two robbers with him one on his right and one on his left. The passerby jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, then save yourself, come down on the cross. 
The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was the preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewed out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and took note of where he was laid. Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish Hebrew you call it Pesach or in English Passover a Passover that's what we are going to celebrate the Passover 
going away from darkness, from weakness, from suffering, from sin, from misery, leaving all this and passing over to the liberty of God's children, to that freedom, to that happiness, to that joy which only God can give. Yes, now it is sometimes like that darkness that was there when Jesus hung on the cross. The, it was the middle of the day and yet it was completely dark. Yes, this can be sometimes. But it's a way through this darkness, through the darkness of death, to the true light. To that true light which is God himself. So if we follow him, if we follow him on his way to the cross, whatever that means in your life, in my life, in everybody's life among us, whatever that may mean, if we follow him on his way to the cross, it will be the way to the new life. So let us go together with him. Peace and unity, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father and of all things, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from me, consubstantial with God, through him all things. Let us bring all our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that the church, churches, acknowledge that they are ambassadors of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that leaders will find their support in reconciliation, not by segregation, and hatred of minorities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that we will come down from the Christ of our dreams and find him where he is crucified, where honest people are condemned as being dangerous to the public good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that we will praise God in the passion and fire of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that we may see how the mental, emotional and physical suffering of so many people is caused by the evil of their fellow men. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those suffering from the pandemic, those who are sick, those who take care of the sick, those who suffer because they lose their work or are in trouble, for the whole humankind, for the gift of consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. And in a moment of silence, we pray in all our personal intentions.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you went through death and su through suffering and death to the new life of the resurrection. For this we give you thanks and praise. You live and reign forever and ever. of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit, merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
sending them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the Son.
Lamb of God, behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Short announcement. So during Holy Week, who has the occasion to take part, the liturgies are going to be uh, Holy Thursday, 7 p.m., English and French, uh, Good Friday, 7 p.m., also English and French, and uh, the um, Easter Vigil on Saturday evening, 6.30 p.m., also English and French, then English, of course, uh, on Easter Sunday, 9 a.m., as always. And uh, whoever has an occasion to watch the, um, the stations of the cross, the way of the cross, the Via Crucis on Good Friday, that would be very good here in the church. We cannot gather for this due to uh, the fact that there are different liturgies, but whoever has the occasion to watch it or to take part in another way, that would be very good. Let us ask the Lord that he may bless us all. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.